In fabrication industry, fabricators and welders often use terminologies like 4G weld or 3F weld, etc. Being bridge engineers, we have to know the meaning of these terms. In this video, we will try to understand these terms and what that means for a welder who is going to perform these welds. To help operators understand the type of weld joint, fillet or groove, and the weld position, each weld is given a number and a letter, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, or 1F, 2F, 3F, 4F, to indicate the position and the type of weld required. Welds with designation 1 are flat position, 2 is horizontal, 3 is vertical, and 4 is overhead. F stands for fillet weld, while G is a groove weld. In general, a fillet weld joins together two pieces of metal that are perpendicular or at an angle. A groove weld is made in a groove between work pieces or between work piece edges. Using this system, a 2G weld is a groove weld in the horizontal position. Welders are likely to see these designations in a welding procedure specification sheets also called WPSS. Now we will understand these positions one by one. First position is flat welding position. Generally, flat is an easier position to weld in since you're not fighting gravity. The weld molten metal stays fluid and wets into the joint evenly. As a result, operators can typically run hotter with higher deposition rates. In general, it is said that in flat position, the weld is symmetrical to the true vertical axis. Next is horizontal welding position. In a horizontal weld, the weld length is roughly horizontal. Welds in the horizontal position share many similarities with flat position welds. But the difference lies in the fact that weld in horizontal position is not symmetrical to true vertical axis. But as discussed previously, weld is symmetrical to true vertical axis in flat position. A 2G weld is slightly more difficult than a 2F weld. In a horizontal fillet weld, keep a 45-degree angle to the joint to focus the heat where the two pieces come together. Don't run too hot in horizontal welds since a molten metal that's too fluid can fall victim to gravity. Tweak your weld parameters to make sure the puddle doesn't get too hot or too fluid. Next is vertical welding position. Operators can complete vertical welds in either vertical up moving bottom to top in the weld joint, or vertical down, moving top to bottom in the weld joint. Vertical up is typically more common. Welders have to be very skilled to perform this kind of welding because molten metal has a natural tendency to flow under gravity. One has to use a reduced wire feed speed and voltage to ensure the puddle does not fall out of the joint. It is recommended to use a 90-degree travel angle for a 3G weld and a 45-degree angle for a 3F weld. Next is overhead welding position. Overhead welds may be required when you're working on a fixed piece of equipment or metal that cannot be moved. Operators may find themselves lying on the ground or floor of their shop for overhead welding, so it's important to find the most comfortable position with a range of motion. The same techniques used for vertical welding often apply to overhead welding. A 4G weld will require a slight weave or manipulation of the weld molten metals to wash in at the toes better, just as with a vertical weld. When welding in the overhead position, sparks will drop down. You may want extra protection on the top of your head, such as a bandana under your welding helmet and full protecting uniforms. Please connect this discussion with WPSS, that is Welding Procedure Specification Sheet, how important it is to define the parameters such as amperage, voltage, electrode running speed, etc. according to type and position of weld. That was all about the current topic. Tell us your topic and comment section on which you want to watch a video. Subscribe for more such content.